Thank you for joining us again today with another guest, and it's Diana. She is one of the founders of Hustle House Fitness here in Charlotte, and you guys are opening up another location. That's right. So before we get into that, did you ever think you were going to be a business owner one day? What did you want to do when you were growing up? Oh, I want to be a marine biologist because I like to swim. I thought swimming with dolphins would be really cool, um, but I don't like sharks, so <laughs> that got squashed. I always wanted to be in business. Yeah. Um, so I was a finance major as an undergrad. Um, and then MBA and all that kind of stuff. I think that's where it kind of shifted my focus to how do you really build wealth? And also what do you consider to be your passion? And considering when you go, I don't know if you've experienced this, when you go to like your first real job, you're like, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. And I was like, I might need to reassess what I thought my life was going to look like. So I didn't know what it was going to be, but I was open to trying to figure that out. So my dad was owns his own business, and I never thought I wanted to like take on that kind of risk. But then you realize by not doing it, you're also taking a different kind of risk. Right. So that was, I'm very risk averse, which is interesting because we're opening a second business. But um, we're doing really well, so I feel confident with which to do that. So. Did you help your dad out? Like with Yeah, I mean, we would go to like job sites. He's a home builder, so we would go to job sites. Um, and I was always around it, but I mean, again, like, you know, if we talk about 2008 um, or, you know, other times within recession or high interest rates, it's just, you really feel a lot of it. Yeah. Um, so it's just interesting, right? As seeing it as a kid where you're like, I don't, that's so much risk. But at the same time, it's like, well, it's what he loves to do. Mm -hmm. So now being older, I think that kind of shifted my focus a little bit. It's like, well, at least he's always doing what he wants to do. And that's awesome. It's what he loves to do, and he's really good at it. So, what did you do before you got into the fitness industry? Um, a cor corporate, like corporate finance at a couple big companies, um, then got into consulting because um, I liked working with businesses. Like, I mean, granted, bigger businesses on you know implementation. So, technology implementation is one thing that I've done. Um, I've also worked on like a couple other like finance initiatives when it comes like accounting and things like that. So really interesting stuff, but I thought it was really interesting, but it was learning how business actually runs, which is you kind of peel back the layers a little bit. Again, small, small portion of a large business, yeah. but it's just interesting. You get to see how people actually work, how things actually get done, and it's kind of slow. So why, why the fitness business? Uh, well, I was an athlete growing up my whole life, so that was a big part of how we spent our time. I mean, we, I was one of four. I am one of four, and um, you know, two older brothers and a younger sister, and we were always really competitive with each other. Um, so it was just something where it was just fun. I mean, we were always playing a sport or attending somebody else's sports game. Um, so it was something that I just never really gave up uh, and just kind of went through college, played club sports, made sure to kind of do all of that, but still have a social life. I'm about balance. Yeah. Um, so it was just something that I just never, I couldn't seem to get rid of it. Like I couldn't not do it. So I got into coaching and then uh, coaching volleyball, like for high schoolers and then club teams in addition to my full-time job. And then, so it's always kind of something I've done. And I was like, you know, I, I really love this. Like this is such a positive way to interact with people. Um, and it's challenging for them. And it challenges me in new ways to try and motivate or teach or cue or whatnot that um, I always walked out of there feeling better. And so to me is like, that's an amazing experience to be able to have. Because when I go into my nine to five, it's not always that experience, right? But for that portion of the day, I had a really good hour or whatever the class was, so. But since you're a business owner now, yeah. it's not like you're teaching everybody all the time. No, yeah. but you still deliver the experience. And what's so great is I get to share my vi our vision um, with other people and people are bought into it. The coolest part to see is when you have people come in and they're like, wow, this is really great. Or I want to be a part of this. I mean, that's where I feel like we're doing the job, right? And there's so many people that are staff members and now other owners um, that are so bought in that it's it's incredible to be able to share that. And that's, for me, I love being part of like a team. That's where I feel like I really succeed. Um, and so to be able to have this like team kind of around me, that's how I knew I could be in business because, or do my own business, because I didn't want to do it alone. I was like, I need to find a good team or good partners with which to actually do it. So to me, it's even better because now I see all the aspects of it. And it's not just in that like one singular focus, but because, you know, we do the workouts and we, you know, deliver them to the coaches and the coaches teach and all that kind of stuff. Um, you really get to experience it. Now it's not just in one way, but in so many different ways. So it's really cool. That's cool. And yeah. you built a pretty good team there. I met yes, a lot of Yes, we've guys. been really lucky. We've been, I attribute that to luck. I really do. And, and also to the fact that for the people that we have bought, you know, that are bought into what we're doing, um, they want to share it, yeah. you know? So it's really, it's such a, 
again, it's just such a positive experience um, for all of them and then for us as well to kind of see. It's like watching like a kid grow up. It really is. You put in all the work. Is there like babies and stuff? And then I haven't gotten there yet, but apparently you reap the rewards of that later. <laughs> now you told me you so, were just talking about being yeah. the cool part of your job. You know, yeah. like I saw your passion just in your face. Yeah. What is some of the not so cool stuff? Ah, uh, you know, it's the things that I think I don't like specialize in. So for example, I do our marketing, but it's so cool to see marketing minded people and how they work and how much I can learn from them. So to me, it, it's the part that's become more fun. It was a big, it's a big challenge, but it's such a great learning experience. I'm a learner. So for me, it's really great. Um, I mean, of course, like some of the day-to-day -day stuff can be a challenge. I think the biggest thing is just trying not to let those little things distract you from the greater picture. And so anytime I feel like I'm getting bogged down with, whether it's just like emails or like little things, they have to be addressed. I mean, you can't not, right? Yeah. You know, the, the business never stops running. So, but it's, it's putting it in perspective of, okay, like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have 15 minutes and I'm gonna do those things so that I have the next 45, the next hour, two hours to focus on everything else. So for me, I like to get that little stuff out of the way, but it's it's just onesie twosie type things. Um, that you, again, you just can't not do. So it, it could be anywhere from, like we do, uh, like client some client follow ups um, or some hard conversations, which kind of need a little need a little more time for. Mm -hmm. But those are things that are really hard. But to be honest with you, I've gotten very good at them, nice. so they don't take as much time anymore. And again, we've built a good team, so which we can kind of share some of that responsibility. So that's helpful. So let's talk a bit about because you have a brick and mortar location. We do. And yeah. The pandemic, right. you know, we went through that whole lockdown. Right. And how do you guys navigate that? And you keep your doors open because yeah. I think you guys did a pretty good job. We did. Yeah, I think our t again our timing worked out. If there can be good timing, there is. This was good timing. So I think it's all about how you set up the business. So it's example like when you buy a house, you know, you make if you're looking at it as an investment, you have to make money on the buy. You have to know up front you're already gonna make money. Now, maybe there's more upside than you thought, but kind of like your base is covered, right? Um, so that's similar to the way I think that we set this up on purpose, but almost by accident. You didn't obviously know a pandemic was coming. So, um, but the way we kind of negotiated our deals up front with you know the people that we were working with for build out and stuff like that, that favored us going into it. So we, you know, it's all about, at the end of the day, it's about cash. So, you know, we were able to kind of navigate some of that and. Um, Destiny and myself really, so our, my other, um, the other owner, um, we went through everything that we could apply for as far as aid, we did. And we did it early, we did it often, we had a good partner as far as like, so good banking relationships are extremely important, especially during that time when people were submitting. Um, so having those relationships, we had to really lean into those. And I think that that helped us, at least from a cash flow perspective. Um, but from like a technology and moving to video on demand or streaming, you know, actually there are a lot of good platforms out there and the support was there. People working 24 seven. So, I mean, that's the way we were able to kind of keep the level of service. Um, we rented out our equipment. Um, we, we kind of did as many things. We opened up our smoothie bar, which we hadn't planned to do until like six months after we opened. Really? So we're like, let's just push that up because we wanted to be able to stay open. You rented out your longer. equipment? We did. That's pretty. There wasn't a lot. I mean, of the things that could be rented, they were rented. Wow. But which is a big concern because supply chain, yeah. if we need to replace. But I mean, everybody was really great and we got everything back. So that's awesome. Yeah. So it was, I didn't even think it was about good. that. It was Destiny's idea. Oh, good for her. Yeah. And I felt very uncomfortable doing it. But <laughs> I was like, I think you're right. You're right. Let's just do it and we'll figure it out as we go. So, and that's a lot of what the pandemic was. Figure it, out. figure it out. You know, we have a problem. Find a solution. Think about some other avenues. You know, try to vet it out. But really, it's just you got to just you just got to move. Yeah. So if anything, the decision making process was a lot shorter than maybe normal. So. So you guys are open a second location. We are. Yes. And when did you guys knew you were going to do that? And how hard was the process of like finding another location? So how long did we know? Um, well, we've always wanted to open South Park. Okay. I've always wanted South Park, um, but finding a location was always really challenge. Um, we, the timing, again, coming through, which is great. So, so basically what the pandemic did was it forced us to become very good at what we do 
very quickly and just be very agile. And so I think we did a really good job of, of getting through that time. And obviously we're still in it. Things look a little bit different because we have so much more information and all that kind of stuff out there. Um, people have actually access to resources to help them. There's actually testing, which they didn't have, you know, in the beginning, which is kind of crazy. Um, so there's so many, much more that we know now. So we're still in a pandemic. However, you know, we're actually able to navigate through that. So once we kind of came through, I would say like uh, maybe the beginning of this year. So we've been open a full year. Um, and we were doing well, like, well, if we can do well now, we can certainly do well again. Mm -hmm. And it was to the point where we know how long the process can be for finding a new location. We're like, let's just, let's just start looking. We might not find anything for another year. So we have to start looking now. Um, so that's kind of where it just, and we asked a lot of people, met with our account, you know what I mean? Met with the people who we kind of wanted to give, get their business perspective of, are we ready for this? Yeah. Um, and they said, if you're willing to do these things, yes, you are. And you're like, well, that makes me feel a little good about it. Yeah. You know, you feel like, okay, like a little vote of confidence when right. you haven't done it before, like open a second location before. Yeah, I guess when you so, do it once, you just read. Well, you're just going. Yeah. I mean, you're just like, this is what we're doing. We're definitely doing this. You're kind of full steam ahead. Um, but second, it's like now we scale. So scale is much different than first setup, right? So you have to, it has to be able to run when you're not there which is a much different process. So how do you guys find your members? Like there's competition, I mean, there's the rock boxes, there's the yeah. yoga studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what is your guys' method on like getting new customers? Cause you guys are always packed out, it's crazy. Yeah, no, we do, yeah. So we have word of mouth, at least for fitness, um, is always the best, best thing out there. Um, if you look at the stats, like 60% of people are gonna be word of mouth, friends of friends. So that's always gonna be really important is that people have a, po whoever they are, have a positive experience when they're in the studio, regardless if they become a member or not. So we have set up, again, you know, by, we've worked in other studios, understood a couple of other business models, experienced them by whether we go or not. There's, every place does things very well, but they do them a little bit differently. And so it's just kind of figuring out what we do well. So um, delivering on that client experience every single time is something like we're constantly training, retraining, trying to figure out new ways to which uh, make that experience better and consistent every single time somebody comes into the studio. So that's number one. So in-studio experience, always making sure we deliver on that for that word of mouth. And then I think number two, we do um, like challenges in studio and that kind of gets a few more people in or they might not have wanted to do it before. We my goal is always to have a very good relationship in the community. So that's with other businesses, whether it's um, corporate, like corporations, more of like a business, professional services type folks, or it's partnering at events with like restaurants, breweries. You know, there's a couple different things that we can do. So um, we do out, a lot of outreach, setting up at races, things like that. I mean, it's definitely like a lead for lead, you know, but the more leads we have coming in, you know, that's how we get people in the studio. So we just try to be out in the community as much as possible and try to provide a mutually beneficial service for the people that are also hosting us, right? right? So there's always kind of some trade-off. We'll come bring their employees in for a private workout or, so we try to make sure that we are good stewards of those relationships, but honestly, it's just getting out there and like dropping stuff off and just forming those relationships and figuring out the way to make it work together. How do you guys, like, what is your differential between, you know, like, these other fitness studios? Like what is your guys' method and what makes it so awesome? So what I like about what we do and the way we set it up is it's results based. So what we have what we have built in studio, so it's strength based high intensity interval training. So we're building muscle, but we're also bringing that cardio component to it. So for any strength day, so we rotate three different days, upper focus, lower focus, and then conditioning, um, there's always gonna be that hit component to it. So that's gonna get you that calorie burn. Our goal is to get you into EPOC, right? So EPOC is what's gonna help you burn calories over the next 24 to 36 hours. That's where the hit comes in. And then you've got the strength piece that's building that muscle. That's gonna, again, it's gonna burn calories over time. It's just, it's, it's very science-based, but what we do to, to kind of not have to always go into the science of all of it is we have our 3D body scanner. So our members get access to four a year. And so we'll have, you know, weekends where we make sure everybody gets in and does it, or people do it throughout the, throughout their, um, you know, throughout their year. And we show, they're able to see on paper, black and white, with how their body has changed over time. And so it gives them that kind of real comparison of the progress that they've made. Cause they're like, well, I feel different. Yeah. You know, maybe the scale hasn't changed. We don't really look at the scale that much. We really look at body composition. Right. So it gives them, you know, 20, 30, 40 measurements all over their body that's it's accurate. 
Um, and then, you know, obviously body composition on top of that. But it literally has so much data in there. We can kind of scale as far as, um, so it's, it's, it's personal training. That I think is a part of the personal training, like the one-on-one -on -one consultation and you get the results-based workouts. So to me, it's kind of the total package. So how does somebody get into EPOC? So basically it depends on, so there's depends on a couple different factors. So, you know, height, weight, gender, age, um, but it's all based on your heart rate zones. So if you've got like a smartwatch, that's kind of where you're hitting like your peak cardio. Okay. Okay. So it's different based on everybody. So I would say, I think Queens University does like a VO2 max. That's probably the best way to go do it. They offer it so you can go in and they're like students will run it for you. It's pretty yeah. interesting. Do you guys like do anything with nutrition there? Like talk about uh, we, it? We do talk about it. So we talk about macros mostly. We are not nutritionists. Mm -hmm. So um, North Carolina, you have to be a registered dietitian in order to provide like that advice. We kind of guide people as far as like these are the principles. Um, but we do kind of outsource then to people that we have worked with um, to get that specific nutritional advice. Okay. Because it's really tailored to the person. Right. And so we can provide guidelines, um, but I don't like to get too much into it. Um, unless they're actually speaking to somebody who can look at the whole picture and they do blood work and you know, it's a, it's a yeah. full picture. So I, I never want to discount from the fact that they really need that full on experience if they're really looking to get into it. And most of our people do. They're like, I really, really, really want to get to know my body better. Um, and how to, so it's great. Yeah. So it's, it's been pretty good. Yeah, I guess you could just be like, yeah, eat your fruits and vegetables, you know. Well, like we can get into like the percentages of like, you know, protein, fat, and there's a lot of, re and we provide them resources of which we've gotten from some of the, like the nutritionists just to kind of get people started as far as like how to think about it and what you should eat, you know, pre-workout versus post and things like that. So we really leave it to them, but they've given us a lot of resources to kind of get those conversations started um, so that people are more educated when they go in and they know more what they're looking for. Let's go back to yeah. just the business portion of it. Yeah. Um, was, what was probably the scariest part for you when you decided to like, hey, we're going to do this at Hustle? Put Hustle. in your money. <laughs> when you have to write a big check, it's like it's like when you plan for a group trip, right? And everyone's like, oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And then you're like, well, it's going to cost this amount of money. People are like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think putting in the money was probably the biggest one. When you have to write that check, I think that's the biggest one. Because once it's in, it's like, well, we're definitely doing it now, yeah, you know? Work. Well, you can always, this is the thing. I think people, there's a misconception. You can always turn back. Well, why would you? You've made, you've made so much work. You've done so much work. You're already going. Why, just see what's coming, right? You know? Yeah. I guess, like, you have to put in so much, so much time and effort. It, takes, it can take a while to reap the rewards of it. But, like, why stop now? You've already made it this far. Right. But if you write, an op, you know, you do the, all the legal documents, you can always walk away. It's just what are you walking away from? And I think to me that's actually scarier is like, well, what would happen without me? Like, I want to be a part of it. Every time I comes, like, I don't want to miss it. You know? Is that what so, you're scared of now? No. Like, walking away? No. I don't know if I'm – I think the biggest thing, I just want to be good stewards of the people that we're bringing on. So the new ownership that we're bringing on, you know, the new studio manager we now have um, in Uptown. I want to be good stewards to them, and that's, that's me being – you know, understanding what our vision is, knowing where we're headed, having good processes for which to them to, to have a structure of how they're going to do things, but to still give them the, the room to like figure out how the, how they want to be a manager. But I need to have the constructs right for them of what Hustle House does. So we know what we do, but we're owners. So we're more invested. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who's, you know, didn't put in the, it might be different, yeah. but, um, but for the most, we have a really good team. So I can't, Everybody does a great job, but it is setting up the contract. So for me, it's more about the long-term vision um, and hitting those, and then hitting our quarterly and yearly goals is really where we're at right now. But that's that's what I'm. I am more scared of missing a goal, but I'm so I refuse to miss it that I'm not even scared of it anymore. I'm excited to go get it. Yeah. So now there's not much that scares me anymore at this point because I think the pandemic got me scared enough. It already took you over the edge. <laughs> it kind of did, I don't know. It, you learn, I mean, gosh, you learn a lot yeah. through that, so. Well, good for you guys. Yeah. So let's talk about you personally. So yeah. like, you're a mom. Yes. How many kids do you have? Two. You have two kids, you're a mom, two. you're a wife, you got this business, you just opened up another one. How do you yeah. navigate all this? Because you just told me like, you woke up at five, you got a workout in. How do you navigate yeah. your day? How does it even look like? Because you got so much going on. That's not just true. the business. You got Every day is different, yeah. Um, I'm actually type A, but I've actually learned to become a little type B. <laughs> Just like go with the flow a little bit more, um, which has been good for me as like growth as a person. Um, how do I manage it? Um, a lot of communication, a shared Google calendar with my husband. Um, 
and you know, clearly communicating to like what, and, and being true to like what I can really schedule and what time that I really need to spend, I want to spend with my kids and have it be kind of undivided attention. So, and the time that I'm not with them, um, like I'm working because I'm like, I want to go, I don't want to have to do this when I go see them. So it creates a lot of time management. Um, and then, I don't know, I think you just kind of learn by doing. I mean, you know, we have parents um, that live close by, so that's really helpful, like when you're kind of in a pinch, you know, which is major um, when it comes to childcare, because that's kind of the biggest thing, really, for yeah. us, is just making sure that, you know, our kids are obviously taken care of and with people that we trust. Because um, at the end of the day, then it's just going to be a Zoom call, <laughs> you know, but sometimes you have to be there. So it's like, well, you're going to be up late. But no, it's it's just figuring it, taking each day and each, truly each week, we plan it out and just kind of go one week at a time. Um, but also long-term plan for the business. But as far as like our day-to-day, -day, plan yeah. one week at a time. And try to schedule in like a little vacation or a break where we're like really disconnected. So, so what would you tell people that want to, yeah, so what would you want to tell people like if they're thinking about starting their own business or thinking about I say just do it just it's start. easier said than done sometimes so so but this is the so for me it was important to find the right people so know kind of like what what's stopping you and how you can kind of get through those so if it's money all right well how do you get more money or do you really need the amount of money because there's so many tools out there that I've learned that you really don't have to pay for. And there are a lot of people out there that are willing to, like whether it's friend or a network or whatever, that you can tap into. They're like, you know what, I'm actually, I love this idea. I'm willing to do this for you for free for now. And then, you know, when you can pay me, pay me. There's actually a lot, and I don't like doing that because I want to pay people for their services. But there are a lot of people trying to, you know, whether they're coming out of school or whatever, they just want the experience. Right. You know, so there are a lot of people like that. I think it's just trying to find and trying to tell your story and having a solid story you know, because you're really, you're, you're selling a story, especially in the beginning. Yeah. There's nothing really to show yet. So I would just say, just get started. I mean, what's stopping you? Well, the, the, the more you think about it, you're wasting time. Yeah. You know, is the way I think about it now. Yeah. It's just mean, like, go do it. Just go do it and see. And so, you know, minimize your risk and figure out a way to get done. That's what scares me half the time. It's not like anything else. You know, what scares me is like the voice that's always telling me is like, are you doing enough? Yes. Like, you got to be careful of that voice, though. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm like, why am I still laying in bed? It's like 4.30 in the morning. I get up. Well, I you get up earlier than me. Well, so. I mean, but I still got to work out. But that's the, that's the thing that scares yeah. me. I don't know if you that you ever think about that for yourself. Like, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough during uh, the day? One thousand percent all the time. Yeah. I think that's a type A per personality. Yeah. So I that's, think. yeah. Because it, but I think, you know, again, you figure out processes that work for you. So I'm all about processes, if you haven't noticed. Like yeah. schedule, to-do list, and it's figuring out, like my to-do list is very long, but okay, so today with the time that I have after I talk to you, this is what I'm getting done. And if I get ahead, great. If I don't, at least I got those things done. So it's kind of knowing like what you can do now, what you can do later, and maybe what's something like, I have a whole sheet of like long-term projects that I want to do. And when I have time, we'll get to that. Or if we bring on somebody and that frees me up to do some other things, then we'll do that. But um, I would just say get started. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is why not just jump in and see where you land. And frankly, if you're then not motivated to do it, then you probably shouldn't do it in the first place. But at least you started to try. Right. You know, you figure out where your motivation is when it takes away time, free time. Free time. <laughs> Once you realize you have no free time, really, unless you schedule it or build it in, it's, it's different. Now I'm in a, you know, you get in a different mindset. Got to utilize that word no half the time. Yes, you knowing be, your can't boundaries. Be afraid to say it too. Well, in the beginning, you say yes a lot, and I think it's important to say yes almost to then learn where your no is. So that's how I mean that's that's how I work. Not to say that that's what everybody needs to do, but um, I said yes to a lot, and then I was like, oh, this is kind of maybe not so good. Yeah. You know, or you learn what works, what is worth your time, right? right? So I think it's you know I think I don't know if it was like Oprah, whoever she said yes to everything, and then now she's able to say. No, these are the things I want to do. Yeah. So it's a little, tri it's trial and error. You have to be willing to mess up. I actually know a cool story on Oprah. I'll tell you after this. Okay. But, uh, it's interesting from Nashville. Uh, but let's yeah. talk about your future. Let's, okay. what does it look like personally for you? What does it look personally for Hustle House? Okay. What, is, what do we got there? So personally, I mean, it's so tied to like my, just my family and then Hustle House. So, I mean, I just want my family to be happy, healthy. It's very simple at the end of the day that we have enough quality time. My goal is like really, I mean, personally, by the time my kids are in like kindergarten that I can focus on Hustle House full-time because I do have another job right now. Um, focus on Hustle House full-time so like I can pick them up from school. That's my goal. Like it might sound crazy, but I just want to be able to like pick them up from school. Not to say I won't work at night. I mean, I'm not, you know, but just to have that so I'm not like having to put 
block my time on my calendar so I don't have anybody getting setting up meetings or whatever. But just know that I can be with them. Um, and not every it might not be every day, but I have the flexibility with which to do that. But you know, once you're an owner or a founder or whatever, um, it's not nine to five. It's every day and you set your schedule every day, right? So it's just more time. But that's personally my goal. Yeah. And then um, at least with my kids and then, I mean, with Aaron and I, my husband, I, it's just to like continue communicating and that's an everyday thing. So that's like gonna perpetuate yeah. forever. And I feel like as long as we're on the same page, we'll be okay. Um, and then for the gym, I mean, we wanna grow. I mean, our goal is we want Hustle House everywhere, but we certainly want to be very smart about where we pick and choose and who we who decides to kind of really be in those kind of foundational, whether it's five or 10 studios, just because they're just going to be so close. It's going to feel so personal. Um, that's really where I want it to go. I mean, I want it to be national. I want it to be international. I want it to be everywhere, but I certainly don't want to devalue the brand. So we're still kind of figuring out what's that balance, and we're not going to know it until we do it. Right. So it would, the goal would be to have multiple in multiple cities. Nice. Yes. So you want to be just South Carolina, Virginia, all of it. All of it. All of it. I Good. want it all. <laughs> Good for you. Well, thanks for joining me today. Yeah. This is a great interview. Yeah, no, uh, thanks, I think this Bobby. is educational for a lot of people yeah. that just want to talk about like getting into business or even right. fitness. Right. Um, so Thanks again, and I'll definitely come in and get a workout. I yes, keep on saying it. I know you do. I'm just gonna like sign you up, just so like you know you yeah, have to come. I'll put you in at five. Don't worry, we got a big crew for you. It. Yeah, I'll just get my ass kicked. You know, <laughs> get that epoch. I think you'll be just fine. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, and uh, yeah, no, thank you. Talk to you, everybody.